Well, hello, my name is Jorge Molina. I am an immigration attorney based in Dallas, Fort Worth. We're serving clients worldwide. Today, we have a special session for you, um, which is a Q&A on the Family um, Parole Program, just recently announced by the Biden administration. And it's, it's very exciting times, okay? So first, I'm gonna tell you what, what the announcement said, right? So who qualifies? And then we're gonna talk about some of the things that we can start doing to prepare ourselves for, for the program. And I'm gonna identify some things that we don't know, right? That we're still waiting to know. And then we're, we're also gonna talk about things to avoid, all right? But without further ado, so this week, the Biden administration announced the family um, parole program. This program is, is designed for spouses of United States citizens, all right? So you must have been married to a United States citizen on June 17th, 2024, or before that date, okay? Um, there's a question, at least in my mind, well, do you, does your spouse, that he or he or she needed to be a US citizen on June 17th, can they naturalize? We don't know, we'll see what the administration says about that. Additionally, you must show that you have lived in the United States for at least 10 years, all right? so. 10 years from when? We don't know yet for sure, but very likely they're gonna say 10 years from June 17th, 2024. So from at least June 17th, 2014. Okay, so um, that is, you know, that is a very important date to keep in mind. Now, what can we do to start preparing for this program. All right. So first, right. So we need, we know that we need to show that we were, that we were married at least to a U.S. citizen on June 17, 2024. Make sure you have your marriage certificate, right? One, two, start gathering evidence of presence in the United States for the last 10 years. So what kind of evidence? Tax returns. Tax returns are excellent evidence um, to provide. Pay stubs. Um, also, bank account records, anything, um, you know, dealing with school, like it doesn't have to be you, it could be your children. But if you're listed there as a guard, as a parent, as a guardian, you know, it's very good evidence. Um, additionally, medical records. And remember, you're not limited to this list of documents. So anything that tends to prove that you are president of the United States. So if you bought a house, if you bought a car, if you have receipts, or sending money abroad, anything like that, photographs. Now, social media has been popular for over 10 years. So that could be a great source of proving, hey, I was here on such and such date. I was tagged by a friend in such and such location, right? So you're, we're only limited by our imagination um, on, you know, what can we shoot? on using what can we um, use to prove our presence in the United States, right? But as long as you're there and it's a reliable source, we can use it to prove your presence in the United States. So, and, you know, what, what to do if you're missing information about one year? Well, you know, talk to family and friends and see if they have some photographs or something to help you build that case. Um, and then talk to an experienced immigration attorney who can help you, um, you know, or give you ideas as to what, how to show presence in the U.S. Okay, um, so those are the things that we know about this program. Here's the benefit of the program, okay? So if you have a pending provisional waiver, all right, those are taking about four years to approve by USCIS four years, right? You're not gonna have to wait for the provisional waiver. This means that you're not gonna have to go to your home country to an interview, all right? That you're gonna be able to get your green card in the United States absent, you know, any bars to your to getting the green card. Okay, so that's what it means. Additionally, if you are um, approved for parole, you're also gonna be eligible for a work permit. All right, so you're not gonna have to wait for the provisional waiver. You're gonna be able to get your green card in the US and while you wait, you're eligible for a work permit. Okay, so I think those are excellent benefits. Um, but what does this program 
what does it not do? Okay, first off, it does not cure any other problems in your record other than unlawful entry to the United States. So what does what are we doing with this parole parole process? So in essence, the um, the administration is creating a legal fiction, right? So they're pretending that you are applying for admissions or to enter the United States um, at the border for the first time. That's what they're doing. That's that's what this program is curing. Now, if you have a problem in your record outside of that, let's say you have a aggravated felony, maybe committed murder or kidnapping, this is not gonna this is not gonna cure that. It's only gonna cure your unlawful entry to the United States. But let's say, yeah, so you don't have unlawful entry, but you committed a crime, let's say possession of marijuana of under 30 grams, right? This will be, um, this will cure um, your unlawful entry, but not the possession of marijuana. You're still going to need a waiver for that, but at least you don't need to go wait for that waiver, you know, in Mexico or, or, or Salvador, where, wherever it is that you're from, you can just do the process from within the United States. Okay. So this will help, um, this will help the, you know, alleviate the weight on the provisional waivers significantly. Okay, um, so, so aside from gathering your evidence right now, here's some other things that you can be doing. Okay, so we don't know how much the program is going to cost, but very likely they're going to assess a charge, a fee to, um, to apply for the process. Just to give you an idea, um, it costs about $495 to apply for DACA, all right? It costs up to approximately $700 to, to apply for TPS. I think that this service is going to be within, um, within that range. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we have, okay, so a, another another important um, point here is please know that the program has not started yet, all right? So anyone who's charging you money to do this work right now is just taking your money because there's no work that they can provide for you right now. All right, so this program is not officially um, rolled out. We're still waiting for some announcements and a lot of, and I also have a lot of questions about some of the dynamics. So in the announcement, they said that there, they will be discrimin uh, disqualifying criminal activity. So for example, for in DACA, a DWI is, is a disqualifying criminal activity. I'm hoping that you know, DWI is not disqualifying for this program, especially because the population that would benefit from here has been in the United States significantly lo longer than the people that were in the U.S. when DACA was announced. So, you know, we all make mistakes, but we don't know, right? So for DACA, a DWI is disqualifying here, I'm not sure. I anticipate that it, it, it's not going to be the same bars as for DACA, because of the language that they use. They're, for DACA, they, they, they said a significant misdemeanor. Here, they're just saying disqualifying criminal activity. We don't know what that's gonna be or what it's gonna look like. We're still waiting, okay? Um, additionally, um, another thing that you can start doing, if you have a complicated case, right? It, I think it would be a good idea to start analyzing whether this is all you need or if you're, of, or if you would like to move ahead in a complicated case in the United States. So for example, many times a person opts to not go through the provisional waiver route because they brought a child with them to the United States. So they're worried that once they go to a consular interview, the consular officer is gonna ask, well, did you bring someone else? And they're going to say, well, you brought someone illegally to the United States. You're going to need another waiver. And by the way, you're going to have to refile the provisional waiver, right? So that means that that person stuck abroad for three, four years waiting for those waivers to be decided. 
So this benefit where you can process a case in the US um, will help you significantly, but you, you might need a waiver still. So it's important for you to analyze your case uh, while we can. Another um, important thing, right? So from, we know that when that got rolled out, they were processing those cases fairly fast. In the during the first months, and then it started getting delayed, right? So I think it's a very good idea to have everything ready so we're able to file quickly, so we don't wait a long time um, down the road. Okay, but with that, folks, we're gonna open it up for questions. Okay, so um, they ask, um, I'm in the United States with humanitarian parole. I'm gonna get married with my US citizen fiance next month. Can I apply for this? So, so first off, you have a lawful entry, right? So if you enter with parole or you were officially admitted to the United States with a visa, you won't qualify for this program because it's only for people who enter without inspection. Additionally, if you enter it with another type of parole, you're already eligible for a work permit. And finally, this person is not married to a um, to United States citizen yet or as of June 17th. So they wouldn't qualify for the program even if they needed it, which in this case, fortunately, you do not need it. Hmm. Great question. Hello, I have DACA and I'm 31 years old. I got married last year. What doc documents do I need to prove my stay in the U.S. for 10 years? All right, so fantastic. So by definition for DACA, you must have lived in the United States since at least 2007. So all the evidence of your DACAs over the years, your work permit, there's going to be fantastic evidence um, that you have been present in the United States. Additionally, with DACA, you must have gone to school in the United States, right? So your high school diploma, your school transcripts. Now, presumably, if you have DACA, you've also been working, right? And then your, your pay stub records, or maybe a letter from HR saying, yeah, this person worked here from such and such state. Additionally, you know, we, regardless of your immigration status, you are all subject to taxation in the United States. So presumably, if you've been working, you've also been filing taxes. So your tax returns. So, and that would be a very strong case for people with DACA's and they're incre increasingly, DACA recipients are, have this issue, have this problem. They're married to a United States citizen. They do not have a lawful admissions because their parents brought them when they were so little, they couldn't, um, and you know, they couldn't enter lawfully. It, it wasn't up to them, but now they're stuck. They don't want to wait the, for the provisional waiver or they're afraid that, you know, if they go abroad, they won't be able to come back, but they're married to a U.S. citizen. So this program helps those people um, right away. Beautiful question. So will this, um, will this speed up the process for those that have already have applied through the I-130 program? Yes. So if, Okay, so it's not going to speed up the I-130, but what this is going to do is that if you have an I-130 pending and your spouse had to leave the United States, they're not going to have to leave the United States. They're going to be able to apply for the green card in the U.S. And by the way, they're also going to be eligible for a work permit while they're waiting for that. So right now, if you file an I-130, there's no benefit to your spouse, but with the parole, you're going to get the benefit of the work permit. And then, and to answer your question directly, it's going to speed up the green card process because they're not going to be, um, because there will not be an interview in their home country. It can be done all within the U.S. All right. It's a very good question. Um, Okay, so if the, if the White House already announced this program, when can we start? The White House had said it's going to take them about 60 days, which is actually really fast for government services. That's how long DACA took to roll out. I don't know. It's going to be 60 days, they said, uh, or in the coming months. 
So could it be 60 days, could be a little over that. I do anticipate that this program is going to start before November. Um, so let's see. There's no official rollout date, but we're coming uh, close to that. Okay, so my husband and I got married on June 17th. Will he be eligible? So on or before June 17th. So June 17th is a caught up date. That means you got married June 17th. That should be valid. Yes, and then if I did not submit my waiver because they brought my child over, can I apply through this family parole now? Yes, this program is for you. For people that, you know, well, again, it's discretionary, right? So if you USCIS determines that, well, the fact that you brought your child with you um, speaks poorly, you know, we can make the case, we can explain the circumstances, but presumably, if you have other grounds of inadmissibility and you're still eligible to show that you merit this um, exercise of discretion, it means that you're not going to have to go overseas and file the or abroad and file those waivers. So, yes, I would, you know, I think that that would be a very good situation in which a person, I would encourage someone to apply for this program. Okay, so another great question. My waiver was approved, but the consular interview is taking too long. Will applying for this process help my process? Yes. Listen, in years of experience, I can tell you that I'd much rather deal with USCIS at home than with any consular post abroad. It's just a lot different. First off, we do not need to prove that we can sue the government. We can. If they're not doing the right thing, we can sue them in the United States. That's not usually the case for cases abroad. So if you have to pick where you want to be processed, obviously you want to get processed in the United States. So definitely, um, it would definitely help your case by not having to um, go overseas. Um, and it's also safer. Right. You know, at least you're, you're home. Right. You can start the process here. You're going to get some work authorization um, and you take that decision away from a consular officer who might not be very diplomatic when they look at your case, even though they're diplomats. OK, beautiful question. If my son is serving in the U.S. Army, does that help as well? Yes, it does help. We are also eligible for military for one place which is pretty much the same thing as this, um, as this process. The question here would be, well, when are you gonna be eligible to, for the green card? So if your son is over 21 years old and you don't have a lawful entry to the US, you can apply for mil military parole in place and then apply for the green card through your 21 year old son. If your son is under 21, you can also apply for military program in place. You just need to wait for him to turn 21 years old. Alternatively, if you are married to a United States citizen and your son is in the military, you can do military program in place through your son and then apply for um, U.S. lawful permanent residence through your U.S. citizen spouse. Another great question. Do we know what the fees will be? We do not know. And in everyone, anyone that tells you that, that they do know, they're lying. This is what I think, however, okay? I think it's going to be anywhere between the fees for, TP or for TPS and DACA. So anywhere between $500 to $800. Caveat, okay? USCIS just increased their fees significantly. They're charging for... They're charging a lot of money nowadays. So, you know, I don't know. They might see this also as an opportunity to make some money for them. So I'm not sure. But I think anywhere between $500 and $800 seems reasonable for what the project, for what this is um, doing. Additionally, there's other parole programs that are free. The military parole in place program is you don't even pay a fee. I don't think they're going to do that for this program, but hey, I could be wrong. Here's another question. If I do not need a waiver, but I know I will do consular process after my family petition is approved, 
Am I eligible for this parole so I don't have to return to my home country? Great question. Okay, so this is this is what this person is referring to, for example. So let's say you have DACA, all right? And you've had DACA since you were 15 years old. So that means with DACA, you protect your deferred action, okay? So, um, um, uh, excuse me, you, you, you do not accrue unlawful presence because you have deferred action. So this person technically doesn't need the waiver, but they don't want to deal with the consular post. They don't want to deal with the U.S. Embassy abroad because, you know, horrible things happen on occasions. So, yes, this will benefit you. Of course it will. And then you're going to be able to get your green card in the United States. And while you wait, you're going to be eligible for a work permit. So very good question. And I appreciate that. Let's see if any anybody else, if you want to raise your hand, anything that we're, you know, happy to take some live questions. All right, well. All right, so um, folks, we, we are recording this. We also recorded a video in Spanish. If you or a loved one, you know, could benefit from this information, check it out online, um, you know, and if you have any questions, please reach out. We're happy to help. We, this is my commitment to you, okay? The more we know about this program, the more we're going to publish about it. We're also going to keep doing these sessions to answer your questions and to keep you informed. Um, if you think that yourself or a loved one or a friend could benefit, you can refer them to our website, our, our YouTube channel, our social media, or they can call us. We'll be happy to provide more information about this. And we're committed to, as we learn more, to keep you informed. And then um, finally, you know, if you like this, please follow us on social media or YouTube, leave a comment. I appreciate the questions. Again, thank you for watching.